Welcome back to Save My Planet. In today's global economy, stores are full of stuff that's made all over the world. These products have to get to their destination somehow, and they're usually packed into big shipping containers and sent overseas. Since it's cheaper to make a new container than to send an old one back, these steel boxes are often just stacked up and left for garbage. Well, one guy in Thailand found a way to put those old containers to use and solve a local housing problem at the same time. Let's go to Bangkok and take a look. I believe that, you know, architecture is a tool to solve social issues. What I want to do is to create low-cost, high-quality, affordable housing. You know, I can't even imagine how many containers there are in, around the world. But even what we're seeing here, you know, not being used at the moment, there are probably a couple of thousands here. One lucky thing about container is that the steel that container are made of, it's basically the best quality steel you money can buy. What we want to do is basically trying to reuse some of those unused items and appropriate for some other purposes like a house. So basically, imagine these two containers you know, being turned into a home, um, you know, a bedroom up on the overhang on top like that, you know, with the ceiling and floor cut out to make a double height living space and the stairs up and lower part can be turned to a living room, maybe a kitchen, dining room towards the end. You know that? These two containers make a nice home. Okay, but it's still a shipping container. How are you going to turn that into a house? So basically, this is what a container is. It's really a steel box, but it is a very strong steel box. The floor is marine plywood, so um, it is quite strong and it's actually moisture resistant. This is what a container looks like inside, you know, it's really just wall, corrugated metal. What it is to turn this into a home, just imagine if you cut open, you know, a section of steel and, you know, imagine the door. Imagine if this entire wall gets cut out, right? And another container is right next to it so that it becomes a wide room. This one house that we're designing is actually a very large house for someone who actually can afford a large home. But his real concern was that he wanted this home to be as green as possible. It's actually designed so that um, there's a lot of cross ventilation inside the home itself. So I believe this home will actually become cool enough not to have to use air conditioning at all. There is a roof up front that basically used to collect rainwater and actually goes into the reservoir because a lot of rainwater now in Thailand goes to waste, especially in the city. Everyone at every level in Thailand is starting to concern about the issue of eco-design and sustainability. Wood in Thailand is very hard to find now and you know the production of concrete consumes so much energy. Chuda's homes are also prefabricated, which saves even more resources. Prefab save a lot of um, material because instead of building everything one by one on site, we use an uh, industrial uh, process, you know, of building and make it everything in a factory, then just move it on site to be installed. One of our first clients is actually a mushroom farmer who, you know, instead of, he can't afford to build a, a house with real wood in Thailand anymore because wood is so expensive. Chuda's client needed a place to live three days a week while running a small business, and a shipping container home provided a lot of benefits. You know, if he doesn't live here anymore, he can actually just move this structure somewhere else. And one of his other concerns is that there's no termite problems, you know, which is a problem in Thailand. This house was built uh, around the concept of four R's, right? Reduce, reuse, recycle, and renewable. Um, one of the first thing we use is basically reduce. Like this house is quite small. You know, it's enough for just a family of three. This is the area where it's multi-purpose for him that he can use as living area, but it's also kind of like a facility where he actually pack his mushrooms. And this is another container here, and it's a little bit offset so that we can have a prefabricated bathroom on this side. We decide to select um, aluminum windows because most of the aluminum is recycled. 
and the floor itself, even though it's coated on plastic on top, the bottom part's made from um, recycled wood. And how's this for being both green and practical? Chuda designed a gray water system to help irrigate the mushrooms. So this water basically, after it's being used, right, it's going to this gray water septic system, which actually get treated and actually the water itself gets sprayed automatically out into the field. This is quite interesting. She automatically turned off water when she's soaping. You know, that's a reduction in water consumption. You know, that's actually a great thing and it's quite natural for her to do this though. So there are a few friends that's been asking a lot about, you know, potentially if they have a piece of land, they would just want to build something like this also. Yeah, if it has money, you would like to do it again. Larger scale. Yeah, he want he wants to build two story now. Wow, just imagine the possibilities. Maybe one day we'll see a whole neighborhood of container homes in our own neck of the woods. When we come back, we'll go explore Punta Islita here in Costa Rica and see how one hotel's eco-friendly philosophy is having a big impact on the local community. At the crossroads of an entire hemisphere is a land where the forces of nature have converged to create amazing new life forms and brilliant new ways of living. A land of astounding natural beauty and innovative people who are reshaping their lives with 21st century technology and a commitment to transform the future. Beauty beyond description. Vision beyond expectation. Costa Rica. No artificial ingredients.